actually time that we get started and I actually bring in my very first guest. She is a very special friend of mine and she's also the foreword, she wrote the foreword of the book Women Gone Wild. Her name is Diana Wentworth. But before we bring Diana on, hey lovely lady, I just want everyone to know there's actually a button right here on this page and if you click it and share to the broadcast on social media, you're gonna unlock some super instant access to special gifts that we've got all through the day. So let's get more wild women here. Diana's getting ready to bring some amazing magic to this stage. So make sure that you all take a very quick second, share this broadcast and bring more wild women to us. All right. so. Diana is a very special part of this wild journey. She was not only the forward in the Woman Gone Wild book, but just launched that she is, she's also is going to be teaching our course for the very new authors that are coming forward to write their chapter in our upcoming books in the Wild Woman series. We're actually launching the next four books. So any of you that are actually called or thinking about being an author in the next book, you're actually gonna have an opportunity to complete an application during our summit and be connected and find out how you can become an, an author of the next book. All right, so Diana, let me introduce you because I have to give you like a really true, well done introduction. Diana, my beautiful friend here, is the author of several best-selling and award-winning books, including Chicken Soup for the Soul Cookbook, Send Me Someone, How to Buy and Prepare More of Thousand Foods from Around the World, and The Pleasure of Your Company. She's also the co-author of two Chicken Soup for the Soul titles. So for the three, last three decades, she has been the founder and program director of The Inside Edge, which was designed to inspire the next generation of thought leaders that help launch the careers of many of the most celebrated authors and speakers of our day, like Jack Canfield, Louise Hayes, and so many more. Diana, I am so excited to have you here. Come on out, sister, how are you? <laughs> I love it, I'm just feeling wild and crazy here. I don't know what's gonna pop out of my mouth, I never know. <laughs> well, you are in good company because we have been so excited to have you out all morning. <laughs> so good to see you. All right, so Diana, um, let's get started because I know the audience is really excited to hear from you, but you know, you were one of the primary influences in the success of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And I mean, you guys sold literally half a billion copies. And I know the audience has been asking, they've been sending in questions and they'd like to hear about that wild story. Like, can you share more with us the moment, how it has all directed your path in life? Like when you were got that calling to be part of Chicken Soup? Oh, I mean, it's the craziest thing. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but I have to back up a little okay, bit. Okay, you, you do it. I kind of know where all this came from. Um, back in the earliest career, my, my first late husband and I had, we were very well known in the food world. We wrote six cookbooks. One was cookbook of the year. We had a cooking school where Wolfgang Puck taught classes. We had a TV show. I mean, I was like the West Coast Martha Stewart. And... <laughs> We were just rocking along with that. And all of a sudden, the super chefs kind of came into, in, into being, yeah. you know, and that wasn't what I was about. I loved gathering people around the table. I love the magic of people sharing stories and connecting and all of that. And then it was like nobody wanted to cook anymore. It was the night, it was 1985. The women went into the workforce, which yep. was fantastic. Yep. But um, our career was falling apart. It was really scary. Mm. And truly, it's the dark night of the soul when you really have pretty much lost everything that can be the richest time, you know, mm -hmm. because you just have to hit bottom in order to wake up, you know, and in order to start really asking fervently for what can be next for you. And I'm going to talk more about that because I have something to share with you all at the end. But um, so I was just going around saying, what can we do? What can we do? And we got an invitation to make a documentary in the Soviet Union, it was the height of the Cold War. And we went with Dennis Weaver and Mike Farrell and Barbara Marks Hubbard, and I mean, all these amazing people. And what I began to notice was here were all these activists mm -hmm. and they were loners, you know, people were loners, but they sitting around the table, they started sharing with each other all kinds of resources. You know, Alan Cohen was there. Alan, you should get in touch with so-and-so. And you know, I'm, Yeah, the I, ultimate I, networker. This did not get lost on me. It was the beginning of Power Breakfast yeah. in New York. Mm. 
And I was all of a sudden, I, I was asking, okay, give me, just give me an incredible job to do something that's worthy and loving and all of that and give it to me now, you know? And then it wasn't long before I said, hey, what if, what if we don't have to cook the food to gather people together? <laughs> That's going to save a lot of time. So we, we happened to know Jack Canfield. We were taking this wonderful seminar that was really amazing from 6 to 8 in the morning. And you had to make these outrageous goals and just go for them. And uh, so we knew Jack Canfield and Barbara DeAngelis. And neither one had written a book yet. And uh, we had this idea of using those crazy morning hours for a, a breakfast meeting. And I knew that if I reached out to speakers, they would come. And it just started out. We all stood up and said, what if we meet every week? What if we get the greatest speakers of human potential? And we gather around and we have this community of people who are really alive and awake and looking for the next opening, you know, to make it a better world. Well, Louise Hay wandered in with her little tiny book. Oh <laughs> you can heal your life, you know, yeah. and... Uh, Barbara DeAngelis had never written a book yet. Dr. Susan Jeffers was really my, my biggest success story because she, she joined, she was working on a book. And um, so I used to throw these parties where you had to show up as who you were going to be in five years. And you had to stay in character, you know, so that you had to, uh, you know, this is how I did this. This is how I got this. This is who I am now. So Susan arrived in a limousine with her husband uh, with three mock books. And she said that she had just returned from her third New York Times bestseller tour. Wow. And so this is in five years, right? Do you know that she did? She wrote Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, which was a huge hit. And then she had two more books on the New York Times bestseller list in those five years. So magic happened there. That's all I can say is that this was like a garden that my husband and I tended. We didn't have an agenda of our own, you know? I wasn't selling anything about yeah. what we were doing. Yeah. I just was selling the side edge. And it grew really quickly down to Orange County and San Diego. It was, it was three days in a row. And I mean, I would just call up Ram Dass and pay him $100 a each place and he would come you know Dan it's so Dan. funny i'm just like hearing you dropping all these names we're like oh everyone in the audience is like what and you're like yeah yeah whatever and i also dated elvis presley you know it's easy <laughs> i know i know but you know what was so amazing is that it just it just took off like crazy and it yeah. was just so successful and it and jack canfield recently at our 35th anniversary wow. gala oh my god said, he said diana the, in, the Chicken Soup for the Soul series would not have existed without oh. the Inside Edge. So, well, you know, I, I don't know all the ripples that are still rocking along out there. And it's still going. We've had 1,600 speakers. We have Gary Zukoff coming up. and. Well, it's so, Diana, it's such, it's so big. Like even just today, we were sitting here in my studio getting ready and I was like, oh, it's Diana Wentworth. Oh my gosh. And this is in Indonesia, right? It's an Indonesian uh, man. And we're sitting here and it's like, that just changed my, my life. That book that made me cry. I was like, yeah, like, wow, like this is, it's rippled. And, and that's what I, I, I truly love about your story and, and what you are all about because it's, you started early on networking and creating mastermind groups that really helps explode people's businesses and their life and what they're, what they're all about. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but you know, Diana, you speak so much about magic and I just love it when I hear from you on magic. Can you elaborate even a little bit more about what you mean by magic and how that actually applies in like your everyday decision making and how you apply it into what you do every day? Oh, it makes all the difference. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much magic has existed in my life. And it started showing up accidentally, you know? I mean, I would just suddenly have a knowing to do something and I would do it because it's so random. Like you mentioned, I dated Elvis Presley. <laughs> I had announced to my sorority sisters, they said, oh, Diana doesn't like Elvis Presley. I said, actually, I do like him and I'm going to date him someday. And you know, this is crazy because... I was at UCLA, he was in the army in Germany, and it was like a frog jumped out of my mouth. So it was one of those weird things that three months later, I was in Paris at the Hotel Prince de Gaulle with my mother on a tour. And a kid from the tour came running up to me and said, Diana, 
Elvis Presley's in the dining room by himself. He's just got these two men with him. I want his autograph so badly. And I said, well, okay, I'll go with you. So I go waltzing up to him and I say, hi, I'm Diana Webb from Beverly Hills. And Jimmy here wants your autograph. And I could, this story could go on and on because I knew him for more than two years and, and they have letters and things like that. But, um, you know, it really, how did I know that? How did that happen? Mm. How did that flash? And I think that that taught me right away that there's something going on that we really have this deep knowing that we can access. Yep. And so then I began asking, you know, not just praying, not meekly sitting there, you know, not, not trembling in my boots, but I began asking. And that, out of that asking came all of these breakthroughs in our careers. And I mean, I, I could just go on. The list of magic is so, so amazing. Just being here right now with you. Well, I mean, Diana, most magical thing because yeah. you asked you asked me why did I write the why did I agree to write the four? Yeah. This is so weird. I I was in a writing class. I I learned I was writing wild. I was just writing all this stuff, and somebody asked me to read this out loud. And believe me, it was way too personal to share with this group of people. Mm. But I did it anyway. And there was something inside of me afterwards that just couldn't settle down. And it was like, you know, women, we have this trapped exuberance, you know, there's this, we've had a lid on us that kept us down. Like we're way too much for the world and it's not okay, you know, but there was such freedom in suddenly just talking about all this stuff and letting it out. And I thought, you know, there's something really fertile there. I really love that. And I, then the name Women Writing Wild came to me. I went over to GoDaddy, looked it up, bought the domain. Okay. Two weeks later, maybe. It's great. David Gagan calls out of the blue and he says, Diana, we want you to write a foreword for a book called Women Go <laughs> Like, this is true magic, though, Diana. And by the way, everyone, David Fagan uh, is our publisher from Top Talent Publishing. And he's a very dear friend of Diana's. And it literally was like that quick. I mean, that's, and also, I mean, tomorrow is Intuition Day, which is about our, following this magic and following that intuition. And, and knowing that everything is being divinely orchestrated. Sometimes we as women tend to fight it, but we just have to let it open and let it flow. It's, it's, it's really amazing, Diana. And, and speaking of that, actually, it kind of gets me excited because... Um, not everyone actually even knows this yet. So we not only launched this book, after then being completely inspired by Diana and Chicken Soup, I thought, wow, this is getting bigger and bigger because the summit got bigger. And I said, what if we just do the same thing and let's launch the next series of books. So we're going to launch Wealth, Intuition, Leadership, and Diversity. So Women Gone Wild, all four of the next books. And then I asked Diana if she could help us because Chicken Soup did so well and the heart and soul that came from the, what Chicken Soup was about is I know why it did so well. And so you, you share, you've decided to help with the next books. Any of the authors are gonna get to work with you. Um, will you give them a little preview of what that's gonna be like? Oh, it's gonna be so great. I am having so much fun with this because I've been teaching writing for a long time and I, I know all the writing skills and all, you know, best storytelling tips and everything like that. But there's something deeper at work here. And there's mm. something that I really want our audience to be thinking about. You know, what are you really, truly here to bring into this world? And what I found is that we have to ask. You know, we have to ask. We have to kind of get impatient and demand it. And we could just ask the most expansive questions that we can possibly think of. You know, what do you really want to know? Mm. Uh, your inner being already knows. We have this inborn GPS. I call it our inner guidance system. So it's really, really important to ask amazing questions. The poet Mary Oliver, I, I memorize poems sometimes just for fun. and. I love her line. She says, tell me, what are you going to do with your one wild and precious life? Oh, gave me and goosebumps. I, I just love oh, that kind You literally gave me goosebumps all over my arms and my legs. <laughs> yeah, so how does that make you feel? You know, is there a sense of immediacy and yeah. urgency to that, of new beginnings? So the best technique that I can share with you is to 
actually take a moment now. I'm going to settle down a little bit and place your hand on your heart. Because that, this is a way of coming home to yourself. I do this before I go into rooms or before I speak, just to make sure that I'm not coming from my ego and my, you know, the the self that has all the quick answers. Mm. And I'm coming deeply, deeply. And it helps to do this if you're in a meditative state, too. So even the first thing in the morning, I put my hand on my heart and I said, tell me, where's the most joy to be found today? And that just opens something up. I mean, it just changes your whole day because joy is our energy of giving and outflow. And and if we're coming from joy, if we're asking where it is, it's going to show up. And that's the way we make it show up. And so we don't do this quietly. We don't do this like we've got our hat in our hand. We're not blushing brides here. (laughs) We have to ask with authority. And... So something really begins to happen. And you begin to learn to discern the answer that comes. It's not from the ego, you know, it's not from your persona. It's really, when it, when it comes, there's a, almost a silence that settles over you. And you just deeply know that, yes, mm. uh, this guidance that comes from your inner self always inspires you. It's always unconditionally loving. It waits until you ask. It's never going to tell you what you should do. That's your inner critic. So quite often the answer is the surprise. And that's the fun of it. So this is really important to build this robust relationship with your inner voice. And something I really want to add to this is that the great sage Sri Aurobindo said, if there is to be a future, it will wear a crown of feminine design. Mm. And more recently, the Dalai Lama said, the world will be saved by the Western woman. So with your hands on your hearts, let's just say, what can I bring in the world right now? What are the next steps for me? Show me exactly what to do. We're not waiting for permission here. We have to ask with authority because this is already ours, this answer. And expect answers. And expect all those next steps. And expect magic. And so here, I have a gift for you, for everybody. Okay. This is absolutely free. I mean, you you have to go to my website, which is dianawentworth.com, but you don't have to put in your email. I'm not going to know who who gets this, Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be reaching out to you or selling you anything. (laughs) Uh, On my website, dianawentworth.com, at the bottom, the very bottom of the home page, there are two little boxes. One is about the inside edge, and the other one says download free book. And I wrote a book called Love Your Heart, Mm. which has, it's Follow the Red Thread to a Heart-Centered Life. I wrote it right after I had a heart attack in 09. And I wrote it for the American Heart Association, which focuses on the physical. But I wanted them to focus on all of the heart. And so this book is absolutely free. And nobody's counting how many people download it or anything, but it is full of all sorts of things like I've just been talking about here for you to use and enjoy. And Well, I, Diana, thank you for that. I love it so much. And, and I think, you know, that, that experience that you, that you brought us through is it's something that I also do every day, several times a day, because, you know, we get very busy, right? And as women, we're, we're wearing a lot of hats and, and all of a sudden we're like, our energy levels go way up and we don't realize what's happening until we go, okay. Let's tap back into our heart because that's why we're all here today too is, you know, we tap back into our heart. Like, why are we doing this? What are we coming here for? And it just brings you back to center. And what I loved what you're sharing is, is the, for the course that you're actually sharing with those, um, that you'll be teaching any of the next, um, authors. Cause we have the next book is wealth. It comes out next April. Can you believe it? Ned, I enough. We just launched this one. We're launching another one, but actually you can, because you've done so many of them. Uh, I'm quite new to this book after book series. So we will be launching the next book series next April, and it will be the wealth series. And Diana is going to be teaching a course every month. You get to do this work with Diana and learn how chicken soup stories were told. And that's what we want to create for Women Gone Wild is like, you know, kind of that, you know, uh, little baby from that experience that you've learned from uh, Chicken Soup, Diana. And I'm just so excited. Is there anything more that you wanted to, to add before we take some questions? Because it literally, Diana, the, the, the questions are going crazy over here inside of the, the audience. Oh, 
But I just want to see how much writing has meant to me and journal mm. writing has meant to yeah. me. And I did a book called Send Me Someone, my late husband, when he was dying, he said, I don't want you to be alone. I said, send me someone. And no kidding, mm. the signs that showed up. And I sold that book to Lifetime uh, to make a film if, if they didn't ever get around to it. <laughs> but I just wanted you to know that writing is such a magical, mm. a magical instrument. And it's a way of journaling and listening to your inner self and everything. Yeah. And I'd love, some, I'd love some questions. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you, Diana. I really, truly, my heart is overflowing right now. It's such an honor to have you part of this journey. And from the deepest place in my heart, uh, I just really, truly want to thank you. Truly thank you. Thank you. I okay. Love you. So, all right, let's see what we've got for questions from the audience. I want to take a look over here. Okay. Um, Diana, Randy asks, I'd love to work with Diana in writing. Is there an opportunity for us? Well, Definitely. <laughs> There's an opportunity for the next book. In fact, on this page at your uh, whether you're in VIP or you're in general, there should be an area for you to um, fill out an application. But Diana, is there other areas if, let's say, if, I don't know if Randy's a male or woman, because we also have men and women here. Is there other opportunities for them to work with you too? Oh, sure. You know, you can reach me through my website. There's a contact there. And I do work privately with clients. I, I'm working with somebody who's the world's best storyteller right now. I can't wait for her book because I think it's going to go with a big publisher. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. So the, the, you can check on Diana's website. Julie's asking that she's never actually written a book. Um, where should she actually start? Um, she has a very powerful story and she wants to share it. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> that really depends on ask, ask your inner knowing where yeah. to start. You know, I mean, there are writing courses you could sign up for. There's all kinds of things. Uh, you know, it was really hard for me to write my memoir. It took me 10 years uh, to write it because I had to learn fiction techniques. You know, you have to learn dialogue yep. and, um, you know, exposition, all this stuff. You have to learn cliffhangers, you know, so people yep. go from the one chapter to the next. <laughs> and that, that took me a long time to figure that out. So because you want to tell it like a novel, you know, it's got to be you've got to have suspense going on and then make it a really compelling story. So everything that you can learn and then read like crazy, too, because and notice what the authors are doing yeah. uh, that, that, that capture you. So, yeah, yeah, that's great advice. It took me eight years to actually write my personal story. And I was like, how silly is this? Why is it taking me so long to write this book? And it was just because your story is so connected to you and, you know, it was harder for me. But now that I've got the process of how to do it, it's much easier. So we're excited for everyone to be able to be part of the next book. Um, um, all right. So uh, Diana, how do you get ideas for any of your next book topics? Like how do you find that inspiration for what the next idea is for the next book? Well, you know, one of the best questions anyone ever asked me, uh, it was a mentor of mine, Dr. Peggy Bassett. She said, Diana, are you driven or drawn? Mm. And that just like, what? Wow. What? Yes. That's huge. Yeah. It's huge because, yes, I was driven. I've always been driven. Uh, but it's what draws us that's the most mm. important thing. And that really goes back to that checking in with what I call the inner guidance system. You know, what is it that you really have to offer that nobody else is offering right now that's unique, that's special, that the Inside Edge came out of nowhere? There was nothing like it anywhere in the world. I mean, I wasn't looking to anybody's model. You know, we were just making it up. Yeah. And, um, it really takes a lot of personal awareness and silence. Mm. You know, I think that's the most important thing. Meditation. My husband wrote a book that you can download free, by the way, on his on his tribute page, tedwentworth.com, it's called The Enlightenment Code, and it tells how to meditate. And I think that silence every day, I, I begin every day asking, you know, what what can be the most wonderful thing that can happen today? And, yeah. and how can I write my book? What does my book want to become? What is its purpose in the world? You know, just live in these quintessential questions. Yeah, I love that. And um, Brenda and Becca both are asking, like, it's, it's a big project, right? Writing a book feels like a big project. And I thought it was too initially. That's why it took me so long. But they're like, it's a big project. How do you actually stay motivated? I know that for me, I actually, I just broke it down into very simple steps. And my motivation was that I really felt that my story could inspire other people. And that's what kept me moving forward. But was there any ways in, that you've got, Diana, that kind of keeps you motivated to get the book written? 
You know, uh, it's about commitment, really, mm. in any in our life. And uh, if we sincerely commit and keep our word to ourselves and yeah. be in integrity, then all kinds of rubble can land in front of us and we're going to climb over it. You know, nothing but success is okay. Yeah. So you have to get to that place. And um, I learned that with Jack Canfield and Barbara DeAngelis and all these other people in, in this seminar that you'd, you'd have to make the goal and you'd have to keep your word and you'd have to be some connect with somebody who's going to keep you accountable so that you mm. can't just drift off somewhere. Um, yeah, it, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that, that it's easy. There's an old saying in the writing world, you know, the writing is easy. You just sit down at the computer and open a vein. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true, right? It's funny, too, because like this book, I mean, this book, Diana, wow. I don't know if you've gotten your copy yet, but we are sending you a hard copy. Okay. Oh, like, just opening it, Diana, and reading the stories. Like, every day, I've just been popping it in, because I know these 22 authors, and just, just getting that inspiration from them, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, you put your heart inside of words, and others get to touch it and read it and feel it. Like... It's such, um, I think the motivation too for, for me and I know for these these authors is like, it was like we knew that our story was so important. And even though we did have fear, because I know I saw Melanie's talking about how she's not brave enough to tell her story and how did we handle that? Well, you know, when you have a story that you know can connect with one person, and this is what I always say, to think of that one person that might need your story or that can connect with it, that you can really tap into their heartstrings, write it for mm -hmm. them. You know, like Diana, right. yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I think, you know, like Emily Dixon said something to the effect of, if I can touch one life, if I can yeah. save one life, mm. then I will not have lived in vain. And I believe, you know, this is where the word legacy comes in. I really encourage people just to take objects that they love and just write the story about how the object came into their life. Because someday future generations can really learn and grow and know you and and you'll never die then because your story will go on and on. So, you know, I really encourage people to write their stories. Yeah, I, I do too. I love it. So guys, make sure too that there is a chat here on the live page. You probably have to scroll a little bit down to find it. Make sure that um, you know where that's at so that you can interact more deeply with our speakers as well. Um, and if, if you have any last questions for Diane, I'm going to take one last question. Uh, actually, here comes our last question. I'm um, over here in my other monitor on this side, Diana. So Morgan S. is asking, um, I was thinking of self-publishing. Will being self-published be a mark against me and my book? That's a really good question. It really is a great question because yeah. the publishing world's changed completely yeah. since I came aboard. I was published by New York publishers all for the first seven books. Mm -hmm. And... Then my late husband and I each wrote a book and self-published. So I feel like I'm really good about both. Um, the publishing world is, you know, it's owned by like five different entities right now. You have to have this huge platform. They have to know that they're going to like make their money back. You have to be a big deal. Um, and or they know that you can be the biggest deal ever because your book is so controversial, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to take a year, year and a half to get it done. And they're only going to give you up to the most 15 percent. Wow. And then they're not going to promote it more than the first when it first comes out. I'm, I'm really being truthful here. No, it's big time. We need to know this stuff, right? <laughs> if you publish it yourself, there are a lot of ways to do that. I mean, you can find... Uh, like Hay House or people like that. You can find people who will publish you for a certain amount of money and so on. You can do the research. Well, Ted and I did this. We found the printer. We found somebody to design the cover and do the layout. And we printed them ourselves. His book, he ordered 3,000 of them. They were a dollar a piece. So he could hand these out like business cards, you know. What matters is the promotion. I mean, how are people even going to hear about your book? And so there are lots and lots of ways to, to do that. And I don't claim to be an expert in that. But, Rhonda, you could probably answer lots of questions about promotion. Um, but you do have control. You know, nobody owns your book. Nobody can stop you from giving it away, which is what I'm doing on my website right now. You can just grab it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there's a free flowing to that. And I love that. So yeah. keep I, 
I, I'm inclined to say, keep your power to yourself. I, you know, I love it. Same thing with us. Like, right, we worked with, you know, David Fagan and Top, uh, Top Talent Publishing. However, it's really a self-publishing with a publisher. That's what I love the most about yeah. David and our relationship, right? And because we kept complete control, like what we did for the ladies in this book is that we made a commitment the first full year, this book, we only first launched it on the digital and Amazon. So we hit 21 best-selling categories, like within the first like five days, because we focus our energy, like you said, on where the promotion was going. I think a lot of people, they put it all over the place and then it kind of scatters. They don't get bestseller status. And so like for this next book, we're working towards New York Times bestseller. But then we are, you know, we really went heavy on the promotion side. That's like all the women being a podcast, all of us, you know, really putting our energy to one source in one area. And I think that's really the most important when you are self-publishing is that you do have a marketing plan because, you know, you're right. It's, it's up to you, but you get that control because now all of our authors, and this is for all of our book series. In fact, every one of our authors gets 100% non-competition autonomy to sell the book because we're not selling it in print on Amazon. So there's zero competition. And I think that's the best way when we write anthologies, when someone has a marketing plan, then we're saying, okay, now ladies, you can be on this podcast, this podcast, this stage. And because I do PR and, and promotion, we're placing people in this PR space so that they can sell their books for themselves and they keep 100% of the profit. And I think that's a really beautiful way to do it too. And you're working, you know, with a lot of other people. Um, so Diana, all right. So it looks like, let's see. Oh my goodness. We've got so many people coming out. We've got some shout outs in a minute. We've got over 1400 people on right now. We want to say hello to a few of you and it's going to keep building Diana. Like this is the first hour. Ah, so exciting. Um, so I'm going to do a couple shout outs to these people and um, remind them of a couple things. But Diana, I just, I, again, I cannot thank you for being you. I'm so excited for what we're creating in this world. Thank you, Diana. You are, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.